Hello. Do you ever wonder how many other firms are facing the same challenges as yours? And if you are facing challenges, who do you tell? Well, that's exactly what we'll be talking about in this episode 160 of the Go Beyond Disruption podcast. From the London office of AICPA and SEMA, the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants, I'm Kyle Hannan, and this is the Go Beyond Disruption podcast, bringing you insights and perspectives from inside the accounting and finance profession that help you stay ahead of the curve, whatever part of the profession you're in. This week, we're asking a lot of important questions. The man asking them is my guest. He is Brad Barber. He's manager for PCPS and firm services at AICPA and SEMA offices in Durham, North Carolina. So he's not only a colleague, but he's a fellow podcaster. He hosts the Small Firm Philosophy podcast for the association's PCPS community. And we're talking about the question, do other firms face your challenges. We'll be talking about the launch of the PCPS Small Firms Top Issues Survey and the associated global survey that that informs, and that launches today, the 28th of May. We'll be talking about how to access and complete the survey in your region, and we'll talk about the value of sharing the issues, and also have a look back at what previous surveys have told us about the issues facing small firms in the US. But of course, this is now going global, which is why my guest is here joining me from another part of the globe. Brad, welcome to the podcast. Where are you joining us from today? You're not back at the office already, are you? It's almost the weekend. Kyle, thanks for having me. I am not back at the office just yet, but we are um, joining you from Durham, North Carolina, east coast of the United States. And today, 28th of May, 2021, uh, a sunny day for us, fortunately, but a busy day for you, which is why we're releasing this episode just before the weekend. But before we get to that, tell us about yourself, your accounting journey, and how it brought you to ARCPA and SEMA. As I understand it, you're a CPA yourself, aren't you? Uh, that's correct. I am a CPA. I spent approximately five years in public accounting, both at the national and the uh, local smaller firm level. Uh, when I was in public, I found a passion for networking, for volunteering with my state society, and I got into uh, to on-campus recruiting. Uh, when I left public, I pursued a career in recruiting. I worked specifically with uh, local closely held CPA firms to help them identify their uh, top town ta- next top talent. And it was while uh, doing this work and continuing to volunteer with the uh, North Carolina Association of CPAs that I got to know a a number of the folks at the uh, association in the Durham office. And uh, over some cocktails one evening, uh, some of the employees were like, hey, you should uh, take a look at some of our open positions if you ever decide to uh, make a move. And uh, here we are with the uh, PCPS team. Great. That's the value of networking. That is. And that brought you to work in the PCPS arena. And I know to some people, PCP may stand for primary care provider, but not in this case. So what's the PCPS stand for? Uh, No, Kyle, not in this case, uh, although I highly recommend uh, folks seeing their primary care physician on an annual basis at a minimum. Or at least have an apple. Exactly. There you go. Apple a day. Uh, we are the private company's practice section, you know, PCPS. So you know how as CPAs, we love all our uh, acronyms. Uh, we are the home for small firms at the AICPA. Uh, we have approximately 6,200 member firms representing more than 69,000 CPAs here in the States. Uh, if you kind of take a look at our, our membership, we have approximately 35% are sole proprietors. There are 37% that are two to five CPAs in the practice. Uh, and, and all in, 85% of our members have less than 10 CPAs in their practice. So we, we truly are that home for small firms. Right. My education has been broadened. PCPS, uh, private companies practice section. Thank you. All right. Got it. You got it. You nailed it. (laughs) Now, let's look at why you've joined us on the podcast. This episode is called Do Other Firms Face Your Challenges? Tell us. Now, why are we asking people that question? Every two years, we uh, poll firms of all sizes uh, across the states here. And we want to gain some insight into the significant issues you know, impacting those firms. And then we break it down by, by firm size, everything from your sole proprietors all the way up to uh, 21 plus professionals 
in the firm. And, and what we do, that, that information that we gather, it, it, you know, we, we anecdotally speak to folks every day and, and we hear what issues they are facing. But, you know, in a survey like this, we're able to take that information. We're able to look at the top issues, the top, we, we grab the top five by firm size, and we're able to take that information and develop resources uh, around that information. And if we don't have the resources, you know, we go out and develop it. But uh, we're able to take and guide what we're doing here for the next two years, uh, essentially. And how do you normally do this? We've been doing this since 2002. Oh, so, so this is not a new survey? Not a new survey. Uh, <laughs> not a new survey. So what we do is we've got a number of areas that we uh, ask questions, so that the challenges that firms are, are facing. You know, everything from uh, practice management to regulatory environment to personnel and staffing. And we provide a number of, of responses, uh, blanket statements, and you rank on a scale of one to five the impact that statement has on your firm with you know one being the, the minimum and five being an ex- extreme impact. So kind of for an example, uh, under personnel and staffing, one of our, our sections, we ask you to rate the impact of finding qualified staff. Uh, spoiler alert, uh, year in and year out, this is one of the top issues amongst firms of all sizes. I'm sure there are so many insights that you've learned in the past, which inform the kind of things that we think we can be discovering about the profession in the future. But it's a disruptive period at the moment. And the title of this podcast, uh, Go Beyond Disruption, is all about the fact that disruption is always with us. Change never stops. But we've probably never had disruptions like the one we're facing at the moment. This is in mid 2021. In your conversations with the companies you work with, what are you hearing most often? What are the challenges almost every small firm is facing? Do they have much in common? What's the research told you? So we last conducted this in 2019 and uh, across firms of all sizes, uh, work, we see workload compression uh, quite frequently and then uh, or in every category. And then we also see you know, the staffing that I alluded to uh, in every category except for the sole props because they're the only employee. <laughs> so if, uh, unless they're ranking themselves as, uh, as a uh, high impact area. Uh, but you know, part of what we do on the PCPS team the last year, we've been uh, busy creating a lot of uh, resources around uh, PPP and other uh, you know business relief resources here in the states. And I'm just going to ask the question there, Brad, for someone outside the U.S. who may not have heard of PPP. What is that? <laughs> oh, th- th- they're blessed then if they have not heard of it. <laughs> uh, all joking aside, uh, the Paycheck Protection Program. It, it, it was a uh, effort um, by the, the, the government to provide relief for uh, small businesses uh, and up to large businesses uh, here in the States. And uh, it was a bipartisan effort. It was released quickly, uh, rolled out uh, last year. And it's uh, one of those things that uh, you know, provided a lot of support, but there's there a lot of uh, navigating the, the waters. It was a forgivable loan. That uh, you know, if, if spent correctly, uh, was, was 100% forgivable. But then you start looking into the tax issues that it's created by uh, receiving free money. Anyway, there, it, it's uh, it, it gets pretty hairy pretty quickly. So what we were doing is hosting uh, a weekly town hall, uh, discussing the the issues firms were facing, and we were having a call in line where you could call in and get questions answered. Uh, and myself and a number of other folks were working these uh, phone calls and emails. So what we heard a lot the last year, there was a lot of challenges working with the IRS. Uh, you know, They went, just like a lot of folks, they went remote and there's a backlog and they're still working through it. Uh, there was constant changes to the rules and regulations around the, the relief efforts. Uh, and then for many, the tax season 2020 never really ended. It felt like it just kept going on and on. Uh, but the the, the beautiful thing here, though, is many practitioners that I've been speaking with feel like they develop stronger and closer relationships with many of their clients. You know, hey, I've been here for you. I'm helping you get through this. And we've worked together. And on the back end, you know, this guy has got stronger relationships. So if there's a bright spot here, that that's it. <laughs> you said that there wasn't one in 2020. But that's why we're now talking about the 2021 survey. Does this pick up from where 2019 left off with quite a disruption in the middle? Is that where we are? It it does. It picks right up in in the basis. We started with the the questions from 2019, kind of evaluated those, added a section completely for COVID. 
and then added you know some additional questions in there around uh, when you get to regulatory and, and whatnot. Right. Well, I'll be uh, asking in a minute or two what makes the new survey so useful in the current circumstances. This is the Go Beyond Disruption podcast, and I'm talking to a colleague and a fellow podcaster, Brad Barber, who is a manager for PCPS Firm Services at AICPA and SEMA. He works out of the office in Durham, North Carolina. If you've just joined us on this podcast for the first time, if you've not listened to many of our previous episodes, this is episode 160, which means there are 159 previous episodes to go and listen to. If you're interested in technology, in human intelligence, in the fusion of both of those and the way that they impact, influence, and in some places provide challenges and other places open up opportunities for those working in or alongside the global profession. If you want to find out more, go to gobeyonddisruption.com. That's gobeyonddisruption.com. Or just search online, Go Beyond Disruption podcast, free episodes every week. Find us anywhere you get your music or your podcasts. Brad Barber is my guest, and we are talking about the 2021 CPA Top Issues survey, which has just launched, but there's another launch of another more global survey coming out today, in fact, the 28th of May, which is why this podcast is coming out this Friday. Brad, let's talk about the 2021 survey. What makes that survey so useful in current circumstances? Yeah, sure. So the survey is useful to practitioners in, in a number of ways. Uh, practitioners can take the survey. They can share the challenges that are impacting you know, their firm specifically. And then they can kind of compare themselves with by firm size with, with what other firms are facing. And uh, what we do is we take that information and we make it available uh, later in the summer. We identify by firm size the top five issues. So you can compare what you're facing against what other firms are facing. And as I kind of mentioned earlier, we will take the information and we will create a, another resource where by firm size, the top five issues, we point you to the resource, to the answer uh, to those questions to help you with uh, specific areas. So, for example, if uh, managing privacy and security is a top issue, as it has been in the past, we will point you to the Association Cybersecurity Resource Center. Uh, the CPA Cybersecurity Checklist, uh, Fundamentals for Finance and Accounting Professionals. Uh, so there's a number of resources that are available that we can guide you to. And if it's not there, then we find a resource or we will create a resource. I know that with people being so busy these days, we often don't have the time that we may have had in previous years to fill out surveys. And I certainly, when I get sent surveys or polls to take, because you know every now and then we do like to be asked our opinion, I've noticed that they are getting shorter and shorter these days, which is a blessing. How's this one changed? I mean, what kind of things will this survey be asking about and how long will it take to complete? It's not one of those long ones, is it? No, this is uh, one of the shorter surveys. This, for most folks, will take 10 minutes or, or less. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's broken down into a variety of sections uh, with statements in those sections and you rank if it's impacting your firm or not. So for, we've got, you know, COVID section in there, regulatory environment, personnel and staffing, practice growth and management. You just rank how that on a scale of one to five, how that statement is impacting your firm. Sounds easy. And this particular one, the CPA Top Issues Survey for PCPS, that one was US only, not so. Historically, it has been U.S. only. Uh, uh, members from my team, from the PCPS team, however, have contacts with members in practice, the MIPS group from SEMA, and we all kind of put our heads together like, hey, how can we take this survey and how can it be applied uh, to our friends across the pond? So you've talked about the fact that there's now a SEMA version of that poll. So how does that one differ from the U.S. survey? It is similar in many ways in that it's broken down by the, the various uh, sections. Uh, anything that's U.S. specific, you know, such as the IRS or uh, Paycheck Protection Program, that has been you know, removed and the appropriate uh, organization replaced. Uh, also, there's uh, another specific questions in there about how Brexit is impacting practitioners in that region. So it, it is tailored more toward that international audience and is no longer for that survey US specific. Brilliant. So in the end, we're all searching for some kind of insight, aren't we? So once that stuff has happened, what 
happens and how do the people that contributed get to share those insights and how will it help them learn about what everyone else is going through? So we uh, receive the, the the raw data and then we analyze by question and identify by firm size which issues uh, were identified as having extreme impact. And we take those results and we take the top five from each firm size and we prepare a commentary uh, based on the top issues identified. And then from the commentary, we uh, create a, a secondary document where we provide the solutions for the top challenges and point you to the resources that can address those uh, solutions. Oh, and will that be for members only? For example, where would a firm find the links to the survey? How would they fill it out? Uh, sure. So we've got the link available at AICPA.org forward slash PCPS forward slash top issues. Uh, the link for the survey is there as well as that's where we share the the commentary and the, the, the solutions uh, piece of the survey. So that's publicly available. You don't have to be a formal member of ARCPA and SEMA, or you don't have to already be a member of your PCPS specific community. Anyone whose firm is of a particular size can contribute. Is that the case? Well, many of the resources on the association site uh, does uh, request you to be a registered user. You don't necessarily have to be a uh, AICPA member or PCPS member, but this is created by the PCPS team, but we, we do share the results. So two different surveys. The CPA Top Issues survey is already online, and that is for the US market, so small firms there. But we did say there were two different surveys. So Brad, just remind us again about the two, what each of them aims to do, and how our professional communities in different parts of the world where these two surveys are, are concerned can find them and start using them. Yeah, sure. So the uh, CPA firm top issue survey is presently live now through June 18th. And you can find that at AICPA.org forward slash PCPS forward slash top issues. Uh, for the SEMA version of the survey, it is going live today, and we will get that link dropped into the show notes for your for your listeners to find. Super. And of course, if you download this and the link hasn't yet been released, then don't panic. Just uh, re-download the podcast or refresh your show notes, come back in a day or two, and uh, we'll have pasted that into the show notes by then. And of course, if you don't find it, if your podcast player doesn't update or refresh that regularly, then just go onto the SEMA website and have a look there. Brad, where can people catch up with you online or in real life? Sure, you can find me, uh, Brad Barber CPA, on uh, LinkedIn and on Twitter. And we also, as you mentioned, uh, host the uh, host the Small Firm Philosophy podcast. Uh, we discuss uh, various topics that impact small firms here in the in the states. Uh, we do that biweekly, and you can find that at AICPA Small Firm or uh, anywhere else you may get your uh, listen to your music or get out your podcasts. I'm not going to let you go before I do the traditional thing. This is a, a wardrobe question. We ask all <laughs> our guests to imagine we've offered them their own Go Beyond Disruption t-shirt. So if you were to print one sentence on the front of that virtual t-shirt, a sentence that delivered a simple message for a listener to take away from the conversation today, what would it say? I would typically try to come up with something a little bit clever, more clever. But since we're talking about a survey, my uh, my statement would be take a break, take a survey. And make sure you do it if you're in the US by June 18th, not so? That's correct. Thanks again to my guest, Brad Barber. And of course, thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed the episode, go tell someone about it. And of course, tell us what you thought. We'd love to know what you think and what you'd like to hear more of. So you can email us via the feedback link in our show notes or just put a comment under the episode wherever you're listening to this online. From the AICPA and SEMA offices in London, I'm Kyle Hannon. We'll be back soon with more conversations that help you and your profession to go beyond disruption. Till next time, keep listening and keep safe. Goodbye. Thanks for listening to this episode of Beyond Disruption, brought to you by the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants. Learn more about today's topic at AICPA-CIMA.com forward slash disruption.
This podcast is designed to provide illustrative information with respect to the subject matter covered and does not represent an official opinion or position of the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants or any of its subsidiaries or affiliates. It is provided with the understanding that the association, its affiliates, and subsidiaries are not engaged in rendering legal, accounting, or other professional services. If such advice or expert assistance is required, the services of a competent professional person should be sought. The association, its subsidiaries, and affiliates make no representations, warranties, or guarantees as to and assume no responsibility for the content or application of the material contained herein and expressly disclaim all liability for such damages arising out of the use of, reference to, or reliance on such material.